crossed. Sorry about that, the wireless dropped out. It's the one disadvantage of going on my phone because as I've said before, I'm right at the end of the, the Wi-Fi signal. Um, but I really didn't like the quality of the webcam and I think it's just something to do with Facebook Live and webcams. I may have to think about doing these in YouTube um, because they are... I like <laughs> Quality is important to me. Anywho, um, I think I will trust that it's working. Two people are watching, so that's always good. Um, and at least this time... Things are a little bit more organised than they were two seconds ago. So do let me know when you join, where you're from, uh, if this is your first time joining and all that good stuff. Just tidying some things away. Uh, my craft room is never tidy. Uh, it currently is a ridiculous state. I must just show you something that I'm working on. So this will be coming soon, but while we're just waiting for people to join, I'm cutting up all my old designer series paper and I will be selling it in packs. So this is a this is specialty. It's you're not going to get this much, um, but I will be popping those packs onto my. And just setting them up with a PayPal button and you can order them from there. I haven't worked out cost and things yet, but. There is lots, and I decided that I really needed to clean out all, all the old stuff. So I've literally chopped every single piece of paper I've got into a six by six square. If it was smaller than six by six, it's gone into a uh, donation box because there's a local charity that when the COVID thing is all gone, um, I can donate the other bits too. Um, and they're literally in the village next door, which is oh a mile tops away and they work with children who need some art therapy so and that can be all sorts of children so it's a really nice cause to um, donate stuff to but they're getting the bits that aren't six by six so they'll be getting 12 by five and you know all those sorts of things so yes lots of stuff will be going there but there will be packs of retired uh, lucky dip um, six by six paper for sale very soon. Um, while I am rambling and waiting for people to leave a comment, I've had no comments yet, which is sad. At least I don't think I... Oh, no, I have. Ha <laughs> ha. It's because I hadn't sw swiped. So Catherine Meller is here. Sorry, I've got it on a funny thing. Jeanette's here. Suzanne Smart's here from Kent. Wendy Porter. Sue Clements. Karen Sutton, who has shared already. Wonderful. So, um, sorry, it's bouncing a bit. Uh, Nora has found us back again. So that's good. Fingers crossed this Wi-Fi lasts. Ooh, I definitely need my hair dyeing. Um, anyway, so I'll start with a bit of housekeeping just so that we get that done. That's Mary has just joined. Mary, who's in my team. She's just joined if I have got her avatar correct. So, uh, Betty from Victoria in Australia. Good night or evening. Um, so, this is a Facebook Live. It will stay on my Facebook page, assuming it lasts on the Wi-Fi. It will stay on my Facebook page forever. Um, if you are watching it live, hi Margaret, there is a button in the top left hand corner that says live. Well, it's top left as I see it. Hopefully it's top, top left as you see it. Margaret, I've posted that thing to you. It went in the post yesterday, so fingers crossed you should get it either tomorrow. Well, you may get it today or tomorrow. Um, and Nora, while I remember, your stamp set is on its way to you as well but I'll come back to all of that but your specific stamp set is on its way hi Mary so if you're watching me live there is a button up there that says live in red if there is no live in red then it's not live which I know sounds as if I'm talking down and I don't mean it um, if you're watching me on YouTube it's not live because 
this is a Facebook Live. Uh, so this is the Facebook Live that I am doing on Tuesday the 16th of June. Um, I think there are a few people who seem to get a bit confused about the fact that I'm doing Facebook Lives on YouTube. And anyway, I have been asked to let you know that it's Tuesday the 16th of June and if you're watching on YouTube, um, ba boom. Ooh, Mary's got someone coming to see her. Excellent. People, real people. Um, yes, you will see me tonight. Hello, Margaret from New South Wales. Catherine, thank you for sharing. So the reference that Mary has made to tonight is that we have a team Zoom call. Thank you, Marilyn, for sharing. Uh, we have a team Zoom call this evening. Uh, we used to do Facebook Lives and I tried Zoom uh, because um, I like to see people. So we decided Zoom was better. So we're doing Zoom and if this time, hopefully I'll remember to record the video so I can share it with people who can't make our team get together. So uh, what's been happening in my world recently? Gosh, someone from Tasmania. Welcome. I get the feeling it's probably quite autumnal slash wintry in Tasmania at the moment. I mean, I know you're off the south coast of Australia, um, so I would imagine it's quite cool. Um, so my last fortnight has been a little challenging. Um, let's start with, of course, we've got the new catalogue, which is lovely. It's an amazing catalogue. Um, that coincided with, uh, unfortunately, my father was taken unwell. So he has been in hospital. He is back home. Everything's fine. It was nothing to do with coronavirus. Um, it was just, you know, those things. <laughs> oh, thank you, Garen. Um, freezing at eight degrees. I'm guessing that's centigrade. Otherwise, eight degrees Fahrenheit is terribly cold. Um, so, yes, he's back home. He's doing really well. But it does mean that there has been rather a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I am trying to go down and see him every two or three days. Um, it's a three hour round trip just to get to him. So it is quite a... Oh, good. Mary's got her thank you gift. Right. So anyway, I'll come on to that. So yes, it's a three hour round trip without actually even seeing him. So um, it's quite a chunk of time out of my day, but I am making the time because I love him to bits and he's worth it. But everything is back, getting back to a more normal state, but it has been slightly challenging. So one or two things have slipped through the net a little and I apologise for that. So Mary has just referred to getting a gift from me today. As I said, Mary is one of my team. She's one of my longest standing team members. I remember when the email came in to say that she had joined um, and I emailed her and said, why have you signed up with me? And she made me cry with her reply um, in a nice way. But anyway, so yes. So I do, for anyone who shops with me in a given month, they get a thank you pack. Um, and it's a card and a bit of handmade nonsense. And if they use the host code, then they get a some sort of free product. Um, and it's something different each month and I just choose it. So I look at how much the host rewards are, divide by the number of people who have ordered and buy something that is that sort of amount of money. Um, and uh, as I say, that product thing just goes to people who have shopped with me and if they use the host code and their order is at least £30 they also get a reward voucher um, for every £30 they place in any one order and then when they've got 10 they can cash those in for up to £30 a product. So some of a lot of my team I was going to say some but actually quite a lot of my team were customers um, and one or two of them said but we miss getting the thank you gift so every month I send the thank you gift to one of the team and it's a kind of random thing as to who it is. And Mary was the person who got it this month and it's arrived, which is great um, because those have gone out. Those went out on. I'm beginning to lose the days. Today's Tuesday. It wasn't yesterday. May have been Saturday, may have been Friday. Anyway, 
Uh, yesterday I posted out the first round of product shares. So if you're in the UK and you would like a product share, the information on that is all on my website. I did a post on it yesterday. Um, so if you go and look at my website and look for yesterday's post, which is the 15th of June, there'll be a whole lot of information about that. Um, and it's product shares plus the opportunity to join my virtual launch party, which is on Saturday, the 11th of July. Um, so, yes, if you're in the UK, do go and have a look at those. I've already got quite a lot of orders for the second round. Um, some things are currently on back order. Uh, the order isn't going in until the 23rd of June, so that may be maybe by then they won't be on back order. Anything that is on back order, I will send out as a second batch. So I'll get everything in that isn't on back order, get that all sorted out and in the post. And then when everything else comes in, I'll send that out separately. Um, and that will be at my cost. So don't worry about that. Um, what else do I need to tell you about? That's it as far as my things are concerned. Um, quick reminder that there is, of course, the joining offer at the moment. So if you wanted to join Stamping Up and my team, then remember you can add a bundle. Any bundle that's in the new catalogue can get added free. Um, and that's for anyone who's in the UK, France, Germany, Austria or the Netherlands. Um, and if you put in a large order, then if it's over £200, you get an extra £20 of rewards. Um, and that's £20 on top of whatever your rewards are already. So at £200, you get £20 of rewards. Plus the additional £20 gives you £40 of rewards. Uh, oh, yes. And if you want me to run a an online party so that you can craft with friends um, at any point, but obviously during June, that's a particularly great time to do it do get in contact with me because i'm very happy to run an online party through facebook um, i work um, and i can get things out in time uh, i will about make and take packs to everyone so that everyone can craft along with the make and takes um so yes yeah. email information is on my facebook group a uh, facebook page it's also on my website right that's enough chatter let's craft that's what this is all about i hope you've all got a suitable drink i have some water um but if it's the evening maybe a glass of wine who knows i'm gonna flip the camera i shall try and do this as smoothly as possible but bear with so ceiling Let's get onto that so there's a bit of stability and flip the camera. Ooh, that almost worked perfectly. Let me just. Right. Now, at this point, I'm not going to be able to see your comments as well. I will keep half an eye on them, but I don't have my laptop up there. And this is my phone, so I can't keep track there. Right. OK, so as ever, I have a rough plan of what we're doing this morning, um, but only a rough one. Um, I think I will start with because I did it on Saturday. Whoops. The hand drawn blooms um, bundle, which is this stamp set and the dies, which is gorgeous. Now, do I have the cards vaguely to hand? Yes. Hurrah, hurrah, and la la. Right, so this was my Avid card for my Simple Stamping Saturday. This was my Casual, and this was my Simple, Quick, Easy. So, and I said on Saturday that, um, that I, when I first bought it, I wondered if it was a one-trick pony, um, but I was going to see if I could prove that it wasn't. So this is the start of that. Uh, we're not using the dies, but we are going to use this large stamp. So I need a large block. I hope you're all still there because I can't 
see any comments or any reactions. So it would be nice to know you're still there. If you're still there, maybe give me a thumbs up or something like that. So I know that there's still somebody there. Otherwise, I'm going to have to run and look at my computer to see if everyone's still there. I don't know. I'll just check, make sure that it's still running all right. It's thinking about it over here. Oh, there's some thumbs up. Good. OK, I will put the volume off. And hope for the best. Right. OK, so um, I've got a piece of crumb cake and I'm going to grab a scrap of paper, also known as the back of a an order. Ironed. Oh, good. There's some comments now as well. Now, this is no longer in the catalogue. I'm sad. I like my embossing buddy, um, but it's no longer in the catalogue. So you can make your own embossing buddy um, with a bit of uh, thin muslin, something like that. Um, I know people who've used um, stockings um, and corn flour works quite well. Um, so you can do that. It's just something that's going to take any sticky fingerprints off. And I'm then going to ink up my floral. And this is the top of the bouquet. And I'm going to stamp and just grab my white embossing powder. Now, this may not work. <laughs> just saying don't expect it just to work because I'm doing it because it may not this is pure experimentation so that's that on now there is a reason why I'm putting the embossing powder on now and it is that Versamark stays sticky for a while and then it starts sinking into the um into the card and at that point, you won't be able to put embossing powder over. So, um, yeah, it's worth putting the embossing powder on as you go. If you could see me, I'm actually st st standing on tiptoes to get a really hard press onto the stamp when I do this because it is quite a large stamp with quite a lot of detail so it is worth really pressing hard and mm, I don't want anything overlapping but I do want it reasonably full and as I say I have not planned this card particularly I have a rough idea of how it's going to go um, but I have heard that Quite a few of you like to, I think, like to see me sweat, um, like to see my creative process. I think calling it a creative process is probably um, more than it actually is. But OK, um, we'll say creative process. Didn't quite have to get onto tiptoes for that one. Now, if you find pressing hard uh, difficult, then your stamparatus may be your friend because then you can just stamp a few times. Uh, so let's. And then that, that will be done. And then, of course, it's going to be trusty cheese board time. And of course, the difficulty now is I've got almost nothing I can hold on to. And I've over inked my stamp and over pressed my stamp, but we'll deal with that in a moment. Let's just make sure it is well powdered, which it looks to be. Pop the lid on. I have actually seen someone um, in the days when I was traveling around doing demonstrations. Uh, I did see someone who had, let's say this is a tub of embossing powder, 
it's not uh, with the lid off and they were embossed they were heat embossing with the lid off and they basically melted the whole pot of embossing powder um which isn't a good look really and it did rather ruin the rest of their day because that had been the demonstration they were going to do all day um so that wasn't a great success i'm just going to clean my stamp to get the worst of the Versamark off. Versamark actually is fine for stamps. Um, it's basically got glycerin inanimate substance um, so it's not really going to harm your stamps. Right now so here's the admission there. Can you see? Where's, I always get a bit worried about where the camera is. So just there I've over over inked and over stamped so I'm just going to grab if I can find it, I've been spinning my tub around. There we are. I'm going to gr grab a dry brush and very carefully just flick that off and blow it. Maybe a bit more than that, just to get rid of the overstamping. Now, I'm not going to put it under the clip because there really isn't anywhere to clip it, but I am going to be holding it in place. So let me just heat up my heat gun. And... Blast. Sorry about the noise. Not much I can do about that. Hi, Rose. So I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I'm not a wafter. I may leave your heat tool in one place, let it, let the powder melt, and then move on. And I also like doing it from the front, not the back. Um, there are different theories about why one is better than the other. So, nearly done. Come along. Ow. Just saying, that got hot. Oops. Okay, that looks pretty done. And dare I say, that looks pretty. So, one could leave it like that. And you know what? There's a huge part of me that wants to leave it like that. I was going to colour it. I don't know that it needs it. First time watching you live. Hi, Diane. Thank you for joining. Um... So, yes, I'm not sure that it needs colour. What do you think? Do you think it needs colour? Or shall I just add a sentiment and a bit of ribbon? Let me know while I decide what sentiment I'm going to use. There are sentiments in the stamp set, which makes sense to use one of those, I suppose. Uh, so, most of the sentiments are curved, but there are some that are straight. Um, so we've got hello, thank you, and friend that are straight. So, colour, no colour, no colour. Okay, Rose, I'm going to go with no colour. I am going to add some stamping. I think thank you. Thank you at the moment is a kind of foregone conclusion um, because we need lots of thank you cards to thank everyone who is helping us during this interesting time. Right, do I have a scrap that I can use? Or do I need to, ooh, there's a thought. Ooh, I think we might go, might go soft suede. I'm gonna heat emboss again, because I think it will tie it in nicely, so. 
and some Versamark. And this is far, far too long, so I'm going to go sort of in the mirror, let's think. I was going to say sort of in the middle. Actually, I think I might want it that way up, then that can go there. Yes, right. People say they like watching my thought process, so watching my thought process, it will be. We seem to... Oh, that's crooked. Um, <laughs> we'll be doing that again. That was very crooked. Let's try it straight this time. Right, let's try that again. Let's have the card straight and then everything else might be straight too. Yeah, the stamp's straight. Load, aim, Bernie the Bolt, fire. That's a bit better. It's still not brilliant, but it's better. Of course, I've put away my white embossing powder, so let's get that out again. Oh, I've just realised what I should have put it on. Never mind, it's fine. It's fine. As you can see, it's crooked, but then... Well, actually, maybe this one's not as crooked. They're neither of them brilliant. I used to be indecisive and all that. Oh, now this is actually quite a good example. So when I said I've been throwing the embossing powder on as I went, um, this is the one we did first, and it's already seeking, seeping in. Um, and in fact, I've had a change of heart anyway, only because I realised the card base that I was going to put it on, um, and it would be better, therefore, on a different colour. So... Let me find a different colour, and it might even give me the possibility of being straight. Um, <clears throat> Stamping straight is always a plus, really, isn't it? So, um, cinnamon cider. So, and the reason is because I've got a cinnamon cider card base ready to go, so it makes sense to use cinnamon cider. Oh, and I've just realised what I'm going to do as well. Sorry, I, I, my thought process is running as I go. It's straight! <gasps> Amazing! And all that. Right, so that's that. Now I will put away my embossing powder. And pop that to one side, grab my heat tool, which is pretty hot anyway, bring in my cheese board, and away we go. Right, so that's that. Now... As we've had a change of plan, I just want to check. Or, or, no, it will go white. Okay, so I want two whites. And they are the larger size, that's good. So I'm gonna need to cut some more white very soon. Okay, so let's clear powder away. And I'm going to trim this down just a little bit uh, because I've decided I want it on a white mat. So I'm just going to use my little chopper. Actually, I'm going to come in this side. The reason I've come in this side is because we've got things already hanging off the edge that are quite small. And I don't want them to be much smaller than they currently are. I'm going to trim this down to three and three quarters which is roughly nine and a half centimetres. And then I'm going to trim another quarter of an inch off the other side, which I'm going to do by eye. Ooh, ooh, no, I'm going to go that end. There's less here than there is here. So this is what I've trimmed off. So let's go back a bit. 
to say I'm just doing it by eye and it will be fine. So that's that. Then let's cut this down so that it's about yay long. That's going to be about yay long. Uh, I'm then going to trim it anyway, so just want it yay long. And then about like... about like that no maybe a little less let's go let's actually do it yay long of course I'm now going to trim it to within an inch of its life that's better Thank you, Catherine. We'll see you on the replay. Um, right, so that's trimmed that down. This is now going to be... Those are rubbish. This is going to be matted onto a piece of standard Whisper White. So we've just got a narrow border. It's reasonably even. And because I've used the heat tool, I am going to use a reasonable amount of... Um, adhesive and it's the multi-purpose liquid adhesive exciting thing I'm getting snail at some point today um, I managed to order it before um, it went on to back order when the catalogue first launched in Europe and it went on to back order almost immediately because it shouldn't have been released um, when it was because it hadn't arrived in the warehouse Oops. So I'm going to be one of the very first people to get Seal and Seal Plus in Europe. So, yes, very excited. Right, so that is suitably attached. Um, and I want some ribbon as well. So let's have a look. I'm going to go with... This, which comes from, I haven't got it all in my head yet. It comes from it comes from the Flowers for Every Season combo pack, which comes with Just Jade, um, Whisper White, the one I've got out, and then a Twine, which is Misty Moonlight and Silver. See you later, Mary. So I'm going to use some of this and I'm going to pop that down and then lay that over the top so that we've got a bit, just as a, something a little softer. Um, sometimes I think card is too harsh for these things. So bury my scissors, why don't I? Now, if I had seal, this is where I would use my seal, but I don't, so I can't. Uh, so let's just flip that over, grab a bit of tear and tape, in fact, two bits of tear and tape. And but yes, I'm very excited about getting um, seal. I'm going to call it snail for a while, I can guarantee it, um, because for 3D boxes, those sort of things, bags, which I love doing, um, when they dropped fuse, I was heartbroken um, because I need my, my really tough tape runner. I also need my take your pick tool. There it is buried. Of course, it's buried. Still haven't found the other lid. But it's fine. So making sure that that is reasonably straight. Let's go there and go there. Pop the lid on. And there we are. So that's that. And then this is going to go just above. So card blank, as I say, this is cinnamon cider. So let's fold that. It's just 
half a sheet. Um, and I know I keep saying this, it doesn't matter whether you cut it that way or that way, you're still using half a sheet. Therefore, you will get two cards out of it. I can't remember where I saw someone say, it was on one of the Facebook groups, and it was someone was asking how best to make card bases. And someone, I kid you not, actually said, but you have to cut it one way, because if you don't cut it that way, if you cut it the other way, you'll only get one card base out of it. And I'm thinking, you're cutting a piece of card in half. Half is half. It doesn't matter whether it's short and fat or long and thin. It's still half a sheet. So anyway, there we go. It's now as queer as folk, as they say. So that's that. Then hmm, I think I might pop that up a wee bit. So, phew, phew, just. Yep, that's fine. I wondered if I'd put it too near the end, and I haven't. Uh, so I'm going to just hold that there, because this end I'm going to trim, or I'm going to trim both ends a wee bit, but obviously I want a dimensional close to the end so that it doesn't flap in the breeze. Um, I have remembered for once um, that we've got two prize draws today because last year, last week we didn't do one. I have actually used a free app, well, website to do the draws already. So I already know who's won. Um, purely so that I didn't forget. Because <laughs> after last week, I really wouldn't have been surprised if I had forgotten. Right, so turn that over and just trim. It's not terribly straight. It's a bit better. And trim. So that's that. Now we need a liner, but I want to stamp something on the liner. So there are these little images here. So I think I'll probably go with this kind of bent back um, daisy. It's probably something terribly horticultural, but I'm going to call it a bent back daisy. And to tie in with the front, I'm going to go crumb cake. And just pop that. And I know it's upside down and I don't mind that it's upside down because it's an upside down daisy anyway. So that's that. Clean that stamp off. Clean the thank you stamp off. And then we've got our first card. Woohoo! And it's only 20 to 12. Wonders will never cease. I'm using only in the slightly sarcastic sense. Ooh, and of course, when, when we get to 12 o'clock, I can show you this week's Spot Challenge card, because if you've joined me before, you will know that I'm on the design team for um, the Spot Challenge. I'm gonna use Snail purely because I've got it. Um, I'm going to use quite a lot of snail because it's getting quite humid here in the UK because we're getting the sunshine and showers and it's thundery showers. So that's quite humid. Um, and this was one of the issues with snail that it didn't like humidity. So, um, so yes, I'm on the design team for the spot challenge, which is a relatively new challenge group. It is open to everyone. Um, and I would urge you to go and have a look at it. If you look at today's blog post from me, you will find the link. Um, and this week is, well, I say today's, it hasn't published yet. Um, and this week's is, is a theme, and I'll give you more information of, on that when we get to 12 o'clock, which isn't long. So there we are. Do we need pearls? Do we need pearls is my question. And if we need pearls, do we need metallic pearls or pearl flavoured pearls? What do you reckon? Should we have some pearl flavoured pearls? I've, I managed to have 
two, two sheets. Oh, I have got a sheet of gold. So do we want gold or do we want straight pearl or do we want nothing? Uh, while you're having a think about that, I'm going to have a little tidy up ready for our next project. Love it. Yes, pearls. OK, so we'll go pearls. I'm just trying very hard to put my block back. OK, so let's pop those away and grab my take your pick. Now, you will know me if you've been here for any time at all. I like odd numbers. So there's going to be either three or five here. Um, I'm thinking probably three. I'm going to go medium and I'm going to go medium there. Um, and then I think I'm going to tuck one in under there and have one over here somewhere. Ooh, actually there, because I, sm I smudged my heat embossing. So I've got a triangle. Triangles, your, your head likes odd numbers. Um, if you've ever done uh, flower arranging and you've done Japanese flower arranging, it's all around odd numbers. So pearls may be on the sentiment strip. Great minds think alike, Diane. One pearl, one pearl, one pearl. So there we are. So that's our first card. Didn't need the watercolour pencil, so let's pop those back where they came from. Right, so I've got two more cards, and they're both going to be using the Blossoms in Bloom bundle. Um, I'm kind of on a bundle theme. I can't think why. Joining offer. Um, I have yet to use any of the stamps other than the sentiments. So I thought I would start by doing a brightish card with the stamps um, because I haven't. So I think I might use my Stamparatus for this purely because it's an enormous stamp. And although I have got our enormous block, it's quite hard work. Um, so I'm going to go... See you again, Diane. Um, I'm going to go with the Stamparatus. So I will use the block for some of it, assuming it turns out the way that I think it's going to. So one Stamparatus. Um, I've got the uh, I've got photopolymer, so I need the photopolymer foam. Um, you can use there's a luxury mat as well, which I do have. Uh, just not instantly to hand. Um, I've also, this is just a piece of this grid paper. No, ordinary grid paper, laminated, um, which I find quite useful to have. So let's pop that there. And it is much, much easier to stamp if you are away from the hinge. So I'm going to start by laying my stamp down. I'm going to come up from the hinge. And actually I might line up with that line there, then I kind of know where I am. Um, and I'm then going to use a trick that Jennifer Maguire, who is one of my heroes, uh, does, which is tiny weeny bit of adhesive on the back of your piece of card so that you can then press that down and with luck and a fair wind um, obviously not in this case but it means that I can put it back because I know where it's meant to go I can pop it there part of the reason that didn't stick is because this is a brand new stamp so it's very 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 sticky so the first thing I'm going to do is condition my stamp there are a number of ways of doing this, for, and this is only for photopolymer. Photopolymer has uh, the mould has a spray put into it that is um, so that the photopolymer stamps release easily from the mould. Um, 
so you want to get rid of that there are ways of doing it you can either clean it uh, you can rub your hand over it. You can use a white eraser, which is what I like to do. And basically, you just need to go over the whole of the stamp and just make sure that you're getting rid of that release fluid, for want of a better word. Uh, the larger the stamp, the more important that is. Um, you can just stamp it on some rough paper for a couple of times, which, when you then clean it, will release that um, that film. And then I'm just going to make sure that I haven't left any eraser on there by cleaning it with my chamois. Right, OK, I have got some inks out that I've now buried under my first card. That wasn't clever. So I've got Daffodil Delight and So Saffron. I might actually bring in uh, Mango Melody as, oh, actually, I might bring in Pumpkin Pie because I may want the center to be a bit darker. So the first thing I am going to do is just check that that flips yes it does i have put the magnet in place just in case so i'm going to ink up with so saffron and i am going to stamp at this point you could not stamp at this point but i am going to so stamp and it's it's sort of distinctive. It's not. I don't think it's actually called a distinctive. I'll check in the catalogue in a moment. This is where your take your pick tool is really helpful because and I might get the other magnets out. You can come in with your spatula and just hold things down. Yeah, you see, I haven't done a particularly wonderful job of inking. Let me just get the other magnet out. The reason I haven't been using the other magnet is because my piece of tape has ripped. So it's not that easy to pick up, but we'll use it. OK, so you can actually see why it hasn't stamped properly. It's got ink still on the on the um, stamp. And that's why using the Stamparatus is just a bonus, because it means I can re-stamp. Re that's a bit dubious as well so there we go so that's now perfect so that's so saffron and then I want some daffodil delight and I'm going to grab a sponge dauber with daffodil delight already on it and I know because I label mine uh, and I'm going to come in this may not be dark enough which is why I've got the um pumpkin pie as well but I also have another plan for the pumpkin pie which may ruin the card it may not okay hopefully that will just make the middle of those flowers a little yeah you see I think it's not quite dark enough which is a shame as I'm using a Daffodil Delight card base. Um, Mango Melody might be the one. Let's go Mango Melody. Uh, where's my brights? There we are. Mango Melody. That's better. I can see that ink, which I couldn't see the Daffodil Delight. That's better. And then I was sort of wondering whether we need to go in with a sponge dauber in the middle. Um, there is actually a stamp, so I think we'll just use the stamp. 
Right, so I can now remove this from my stamparatus and that tiny, tiny bit of glue um, is easy to release. And then just I'll pop that on the floor to clean. It's only going on the floor because I'm running out of space. So we've got this stamp here, which is a centre. So let's grab that and oops and now for small stamps to condition them i just rub it on um, it has the same effect as using an eraser um, so that's easy and then i'm going to bring in pumpkin pie i think gosh i need to re-ink this hmm no i do definitely need to re-ink it so we won't use pumpkin pie we will use Oh, Bumblebee. Let's use Bumblebee. So just add our dots in the middle of our flowers. Comsa. And then clean that off. Uh, I do want some leaves because because I want some leaves, really. Um, there are a few to choose from. I think I'm going to go that one. And my B block. And again, I will condition it on the back of my hand or possibly the front of my hand, I've got garden green. So, yep, that's inking nicely. And I'm just going to kind of snuggle it in somewhere. I don't want it overlapping. I don't mind that it doesn't touch because these don't kind of need to touch. Um, so I'm not too worried about just kind of hovering in. And I might just do a second generation there. And let's find a scrap piece again. A second generation, ooh, actually coming off the side. There, and then a whole other cluster up here so one now there is a line now because i've stamped over the edge um i'll re-ink in a minute so if i stamp without thinking about it i'm going to get that line because that didn't touch the card or the paper it it was in thin air so if you want to use all of the stamp you need to re-ink as it was i would have still needed to re-ink because there's a possibility that that line might have shown even though I'm only using a little bit does that make sense I hope it does so that's that so that's my basic card then I want a sentiment I don't really want to go thank you again um, get well soon hello sure do miss you actually is probably the way to go because again we aren't seeing all the people that we have been seeing oh and do remember if you're in the UK it's Father's Day this coming weekend so get your Father's Day card sorted out right so I'm tempted to just go, do, go straight down and do this as a single layer card. And I'm tempted to go Bumblebee. Except do I want it that way up? I think I want it that way up. In fact, I'm going to do it on a scrap and I'm going to then punch it out. One scrap. And I will add some 
ribbon so it won't be a simple one layer card after all that's just the way i rock and roll right okay let us find a punch Ooh, i haven't used that one for a while please don't ask me what it's called i can't remember but i will list it on my website it's one of the label me lovely label me pretty label me something ones And you can then add holes or slits. So it's quite a nice punch. I'm actually, I don't know why I've tidied that up because I need it again because I've just had, you know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't do something odd with a, or something more with a punch. So, hmm. No, I, I am, but no. So. OK, that's fine. I know what I'm doing. I may not seem like I know what I'm doing, but I do. So I'm going to trim that edge off and I'm going to trim that edge off. Just tidy that up a wee bit. That's better. Now, I did find it. That is one and a quarter inches maybe not let's try centimeters two and nine 2.9 centimeters okay there's a nice round figure for you so i'm going to just chop a bit of this off don't need much uh, that much probably and grab my chopper and I want a piece that is 2.9 centimetres. So that is, whoops, let's open it right the way up. Yeah, it would be right on the edge of a, of a thing, wouldn't it? 2.9 centimetres. Fingers crossed, guys. So hopefully, yeah, you see, it's actually not 2.9 centimetres. Point, let's try 2.8. I just want the hair of a smidge off. So what I'm aiming to do is to pop this in. Yeah, I've taken too much off, but it's fine. Punch, turn it round, and then I want to punch the same sort of distance, which is about there at that end. And then I've got an elongated version of that punch, but it means that I can layer them up. The other way of doing it, which might have been easier, is to just repunch this. Um, but, you know, why make it easy when I can make it difficult? <clears throat> Otherwise known as I hadn't thought about that. So, splodge of adhesive. And I do like liquid for this because it does mean that I can move everything around until I'm happy. Like that. Then I'm going to grab some bumblebee ribbon. And chop that off. And we're going to come there. So again, same repeat process. Two small pieces of tear and tape. And I want them about there. So I actually want it going over the... the um, leaves so that it actually looks like it's meant to go over the leaves as opposed to not quite so once we've got one piece down it's kind of easier to do everything else so let's 
release that line up my ribbon straight Do you know, I think it's beginning to try to rain it's a really sultry day here today so that's like that flip that over there and pop that there and flip that over there and it's straight by some miracle and then a couple of dimensionals is really all we need like that and then I have got, oh, well, I was going to use um, Daffodil Delight, which obviously is not going to work. Uh, so what have I got? Already cut, no. Uh, I think we might go Bumblebee. So let me grab a sheet of Bumblebee. I don't have a huge amount of Bumblebee left. I've got it ordered, but it hasn't arrived yet. So, this is how I do multi cards. Take a sheet, score it in the middle, and then cut it in half. And you've heard me say before, I do them this way because it's easier for photographs, particularly if there's something on the inside of the card. Most of my photos are flat, um, but I do. If, I, if I've stamped on the inside, I will do a raised, a, a standing up, and I'll have it at an angle so you can see the inside. So, glue. And then I've got one more card, um, which I've pretty much prepped, apart from there is a fiddly bit, which I can probably rush through to a degree. So that's that, and I've got a piece for the inside, and we know we've got small flowers, so I'm going to grab that one, I think. So the larger of the two small ones. And when they're new, they really don't want to come off. Pop that on there, pop that back in here. Sure do miss you. And so saffron on the basis it's our palest colour. It's a scrap. Honest, it's a scrap. So that's that. And then is that going to be too big? I'll probably get away with it. So, again, I think I'm going to go Bumblebee, and I'm going to do just one bit of it, so I don't get a whole splodge, just to tie it into the outside. Then that is going to go on the inside. Again, I'm going to use Snail just for speed. But I'm going to use a reasonable amount so that my card doesn't fall to pieces. And I'm then going to fix the fact that the outside is now flapping in the breeze. So because I've used dimensionals, this is flapping. Um, actually, that's all it needed to do. If it continued to do that, all I would do is pop another dimensional underneath to stop it moving around. So that's our second card. And our final card which, as I say, I have pretty much prepped, is using the matching dies. So this goes with the Blossoms in Bloom stamp set as a bundle. Don't want those bits. Don't want my ribbon anymore either. So these are the dies. So you get large gaps and small gaps. I've only used the large 
dies for this, as in the big dies. Um, I've already got it. This is a liner. So I've got Purple Posy card with Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. This is what's going to take the time. And I'm going to do that first. But what I need is a silicon mat and my little pot of thing, because what I'm going to do is grab a splodge of multi-purpose and I'm not going to go all over, but I'm going to just splodge that and just add it in some strategic places. And for me, the most strategic places are these leaves where there's a thin bit that sort of sticks up because that will catch and we don't want it to catch. And then I'm just going to do some other bits. Just so that we know we've got glue in a few strategic places. Just be careful that you don't rip your die. Uh, when that dries on the silicone mat, you can just rub it off. And then all we need to do is very carefully line one die up with the other. and press and if you guess it wrong you've got a little bit of wiggle room just to readjust it's going to be things like the leaves that are going to be slightly awkward there we go and then don't need that anymore and then we can just add some adhesive to the back and again i'm just going to go for a few strategic places and as I've said already for me strategic places are things that might catch I mean I will do some in the middle but if it's sort of sticking out and waving in the breeze then glue is a good idea and then just a few other places so sticking out and waving in the breeze would be my leaves um, but other than that I'm really not being too particular about where I put my adhesive other than enough places that it's going to hold down. And then holding it by a bit that's not sticky, shaking like the proverbial leaf, noting that you've got some glue onto your purple posy card base so it's always worth covering that up that is a card really quick oh new people joining hello mr splodge fortunately i know that you're not actually mr splodge hi deborah so there we go that needs to just move a wee bit so i'll just coax that out a little and again this is where your take a pick is really helpful so that needs to kind of fill in that space that's all right that one's all right so that's those now i am going to add something i think probably just some little rhinestones so some clear rhinestones just to lift it a little because it's a little mat uh, which is not there it is I thought I'd lost it oh, that would have been the second one I'd lost um, it's just a bit flat for me so I'm going to ooh that's gone for a walk let's see if it's still got enough adhesive on it to use Yes. Okay, so let's just pop. I think I'll just pop a rhinestone kind of towards the middle of each of these flowers. And 
And as I've already said, I like odd numbers. Those are an odd number. That's five. So that's that outside finished. For the inside, I think it does need something. So we're going to grab our stamp set again. And I think thinking of you will do nicely. So grab that. And change the block. And I'm going to grab uh, Highland Heather, apparently. For some reason, I can't find my gorgeous grape. So we're going to use Highland Heather. Weird. And just stamp that on the inside like that. And I might actually, while I've got it out, do a little flower in the bottom corner. Comsa. Where is my gorgeous grape? It's weird. Oh well, it'll turn up. Um, what I'm not sure if I want is the centre. I think I might. So I'll just again just ink up a few of the blodges and add those. So there we go. Let me add that to the middle of the card. And then it's prize time. And we like prizes. So let me. Ooh, that wasn't straight. Not even close to straight. And yes, I know this is very strange for me. It's a side opening card. It just happened that I had a piece of purple posy lying around. So there we go. So these are our three cards for the day. So let's get rid of dimensionals and scrap bits. So that's the dies from the Blossoms in Bloom bundle. That's the stamps. And I am going to sort that out because it's beginning to do my head in. Um, so that's the stamps from the bundle. So all I'm going to do is take a dimensional, remove the backing. So this is a mini dimensional, obviously, and just slip that in there and that will keep it in place. Um, it's purely because I stuck the dimensionals over the ribbon. So that's that. That's one bundle. And this is the stamp set for the, oh, I've lost it, hand-drawn blossoms, hand-drawn blooms. Where did, oh, that's where I put it. For the hand-drawn blooms bundle. And if you remember, we've got that lovely big die for the blooms. Oh, and as it is now gone 12 o'clock, this is my design for um, for the spot challenge, which is the um, theme is simple wedding, clean and simple wedding, something like that. Um, I kind of had a bit taken a bit of a liberty in that I've done lots of die cuts. This is the for forever fern dies but it's not it's forever flourishing dies um and it's all vellum basically so we've got a thick whisper white card two layers of vellum uh, one is plain one's gone through the subtle th the 3d subtle embossing folder then i've done my own mix of embossing powder which is gold and silver to get this sort of champagne finish and then that's on champagne foil. But you can see it over on my website. The post went live at 12 o'clock. So do go and have a look at that. And I've just popped on some champagne rhinestones as well. So really lovely theme. Uh, clean and simple wedding. So these are the cards for today. But we need prizes. So I forgot to draw the prize for the back end of May. Which, if you remember, was the Poppy Parade um what do we call it? Textured weave ribbon. 
Um, and that, as I say, I've used an app to do a random selection of people who have shared, and that has gone to Wendy Littlechild. So, Wendy, if you can contact me and let me have your address, that would be great. Uh, I give you two weeks to do that. Then last week, which was the 2nd of June, the prize was um, the Pressed Petals notebook. Um, this isn't all the pages because I keep ripping them out. So it's a new shiny one of those, so Pressed Petals journal. And that has gone to Jane Peters. So again, Jane, can you let me have your address, please? Just drop me an email in an ideal world. This week, we have got brand new, still in wrapper, the Country Floral Dynamic Textured Impressions Embossing Folder, um, or 3D folder. Um, this retired out of the catalogue just earlier this month. Um, it's a lovely embossing folder. I have a few of these that will be coming through as prizes. So if you have shared the video either here or over on YouTube or both, if you do both, you get two entries, um, then you will be entered to win this and I will draw that in two weeks time. Whew. Hurrah. So we are there. Thank you very much for joining me today. Have a fantastic week. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm always happy to have questions. You can either leave them here on Facebook. If you are leaving them on Facebook, could you please tag me? Because otherwise it gets quite difficult to find the questions. So just type Liz Yule um, or Old Stables Craft, whichever it allows you to do. But if you tag me, then I'll pick up the question. Um, if you're on YouTube, just leave it in the comments below. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, this there will be a blog post to go with this, which is in the description bar below. And I will post that probably Thursday this week. Um, I've got a few things going live and I think Thursday is my next slot. So Thursday and I'll have pictures of all the cards and all that good stuff. Um, thank you very much indeed. Have a fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you next week for another madness at coffee and cards. Thanks a lot. <laughs>